Hi. Good evening, everyone. Can you hear me? Okay. Uh, let's start. Welcome to the third interconversation online forum organized by the Department of Early Childhood Education at the Education University of Hong Kong. I'm Sun Jing from the EC Department. My colleague, um, Dr. Alfredo Bautista, and I currently serve as Associate Head of the Department for Internationalizations. We conducted the first Interconversation International Online Forum in May and the second in July 2020, and this is the third event we organized. We hope that the Interconversation uh, can be a featured departmental online event and a virtual gathering occasion for our ECE colleagues all over the world. In today's Interconversation Forum, we will talk about all you want to know about the program of Doctor of Education in ECE at EDHK. The reason for conducting this session is because many of our colleagues receive different inquiries on the application for the program of EDD in ECE every year. We are so excited to receive these inquiries as we do have a very strong ADD program in the department and we welcome the applicants with excellent backgrounds and committed to the field of early childhood development and education all over the world. Therefore, we wish to provide a comprehensive and interactive introduction of our EDD in ECE program today for all the potential applicants and all the colleagues who want to know more about our EDD program. For today's session, we have invited a group of speakers with messages from different aspects related to the EDD program for you. The session will last about one hour. We hope that you can enjoy today's session. We have a total of around 140 particip participants from over 10 countries and territories registered for today's session, uh, including mainland China, Hong Kong, UK, UAE, Thailand, Malaysia, Vietnam, Singapore, Indonesia, Australia, New Zealand, and Fiji. Many thanks for all your interest and welcome. Before we get started, I would like to mention a few housekeeping guidelines. First of all, everyone in this room is muted by default. Uh, we want to know your concerns and your questions about the application and about the programs. But please raise your questions and comments during the time for Q&A, and you can also type your questions in the chat room first. Another friendly rem reminder is that the session is being recorded as we want to share this video with all the participants later on and for the program promotion purpose. Finally, photographs of the screen might be posted on our social media pl platforms. So please don't connect your camera if you prefer not to appear in these pictures. As I just said, we have a group of speakers who are going to tell you our EDD program from different aspects. There will also be a Q&A session after all the sharing presentations. In order to make the session more coherent, may I invite every speaker briefly introduce yourself first before your sharing. And now I'm going to pass the time to the speakers. Dr. Tan, can I pass the time to you? I will stop sharing the screen and you can just go ahead and share your screen. Oh, okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you everybody. Welcome to this session. Uh, I'm Pansy, um, the program coordinator uh, or the area coordinator in the EDD program. Uh, today, uh, because of the tight schedule, and I could like to uh, highlight some of the critical features and the structure of the program of EDD. Um, can you see my share screen now? Okay, maybe I'll start with the first PowerPoint. Um, I know that uh, recently we have a lot of inquiry about applying the uh, EDD program, and but 
many questions about uh, what is the differences between EDD and PhD. And I think, first of all, uh, the purpose of EDD program is uh, particularly designed for professionals who want to enrich their career with a postgraduate qualification and enable them to uh, investigate the issues about um, uh, children's uh, development or uh, early child education, teaching and learning. And such kinds of research um, can contribute to the easy um, uh, research um, accordingly. And this is the major purpose of our program. But why you want to choose uh, to study um, uh, EDD in, uh, in our university. Um, I think there, there's some uh, critical features of, or, or um, renowned um, uh, features of, of our department. Firstly, we have a uh, lot of scholars. They come from a wide range of uh, disciplines and they have a rich experience in local and international context research. And secondly, uh, we focus on teaching and research as well. So uh, we put emphasis on coursework and research together. And when you study in Hong Kong, you can explore a very different um, cultural perspective and you can obtain an international perspective in educational research, pedagogy and practice. And you can build up a strong network not just with your supervisors or your supervisor's research team, as well as with other uh, research students. And not just the research activities do, that organized by our department, but we also have a lots of research activities organized by the faculty and the university level. So um, the academic exposure, that's a, that's a very rich and very substantial. And secondly, we have a uh, First, a variety of teaching met methods that can help you to uh, finish your study. Say, for example, we have, of course, we have tutorial with your supervisor. We have face-to-face -face classes. We have a workshop. We have um, mass lecture. And during this pandemic, we, all, uh, we also uh, offer Zoom teaching, of course, and Zoom tutorial with our students. So, even uh, the classes is uh, suspended, the face-to-face -face classes is suspended. We keep very active communications and, and offer very quality supervisions with our students. And the last one that is uh, the, the, the points that I, I, I really want to make is um, we call, because we have a special support to, um, um, to the EDD student, which include a publication award scheme. And according to my experience, because I have been in this position for um, many, many years, and I have to tell you that uh, we have uh, a lot of uh, research students, they have uh, uh, got very good uh, research um, opportunity or research experience by engaging in different research projects with our colleagues. This is also a very um, um, special signature of our department because we, 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 we have a lot of uh, good researchers, they have many research projects, you got a lot of chances to, to have been engaged in a wide range of research uh, projects and activities. And what is the requirement of, um, of um, a EDD? Um, first of all, uh, if you go to the uh, websites of the grad school, graduate school, you can also get similar information that we require students uh, that can put theory into practice. It means that they have uh, good theory backgrounds about the ECE, uh, early child education. They have the ability to uh, implement the theory uh, into the, uh, the daily practice. It means the teaching practice or other or, or other. Uh, different fields of um, uh, practice of ECE, and they have the capacity to uh, write up their propo uh, proposal, uh, to give qualifying presentations, and write up the report. And that is the requirement of our of our EDD student. And you may also be interested to uh, the structure of the of our program. And first of all, part of the 
courses as offered by grad school. Uh, say, for example, the taught courses uh, in the green table on the left hand side, uh, that is the taught courses, the taught core courses. They are uh, they are free credits. Um, they are all offered by uh, the graduate school. Uh, they are related to research methodology, both qualitative and quantitative, and also help you to prepare the research proposal. Um, if you are very interested in ECE, then you will uh, take up the boxes about uh, you want to specialize uh, your study in the ECE area. Then you have to take up at least two elective courses in the department of uh, ECE. And finally, you have to um, nominate a supervisor who are uh, our colleague. It means that sh uh, she or he has to be uh, a ECE um, academic staff. And then under his or her supervision, you finish your, your thesis that will take up uh, about um, six credit and six credit for uh, the development of the thesis proposal and the uh, thesis itself is 42 uh, credit points. And um, end up total is 40, uh, sorry, 72 credit points for, for you to finish the, the whole program. What are the names or, or, or the courses that we offer uh, in the ECE department that are basically um, uh, just four courses? Uh, when you look at the name of the courses, you uh, have already in mind that um, you are, the, all the courses are preparing you for uh, the thesis uh, proposal submissions and also uh, get a comprehensive understanding and background and preparations for your thesis. Um, oh, that is uh, the very important information because uh, a lot of you will concern about the uh, tuition fee. And for for finishing uh, the, the, the EDD program, that's a 72 credit points. We can't, uh, the, the school's tuition fee is uh, count as uh, each credit point. So it says 500 Hong Kong dollar per credit. And so end up, if you want to uh, study EDD, and then that is uh, 360,000 Hong Kong dollar for, for finish the whole uh, degree. And I can show you some um, thesis topic that have been conducted by our graduate. And when you look at most of them, and they are related to uh, uh, ECC pedagogy. And some of them are related to, say, for example, uh, art, uh, aesthetics, uh, education, a play, and also language learning. And currently, we uh, we we've, we've got students. They uh, have different interests in, say, for example, management and uh, physical education, and so and so. So you can see just from the topics or, or uh, the thesis title, you can see we 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 have a, a very strong teams of academics. So. Um, okay. Um, how about the general admission re requirement? Um, basically, you have to get a master degree in uh, discipline of education of a uh, relevant field in uh, early child education. We expect that you have some uh, teaching experience or professional experience in the field. Um, Basically, we, 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 we will consider this uh, professional experience case by case. For some applicants, they may have very rich teaching experience or they have been uh, doing a uh, job related to ECE for quite a few years. That, that will be good. But we also accept uh, uh, applicants who are fast graduate. But it depends on um, how well uh, their proposal and how strong the academic background. So for the other requirement, we, we will take it case by case, but at least you have to, if you apply for the English stream, uh, your English ability should be very good. So the basic requirement is uh, we just follow the, the, the requirement given by the graduate school. 
IOs or TOEFL, and that is the number of the requirement you have to take care of. Um, the other things that you need to prepare before you uh, apply for the uh, our program, that is personal study statement, why you're interested in um, uh, studying EDD, and a study proposal. We focus a lot on the study proposal um, in terms of the length, the purpose, the methodology, and the literature that you have been, you have uh, put, uh, you have put into the proposal, and um, that is the, the all you need to prepare for the for for your applications. And I know that uh, we today, Shenzhen, we today we have uh, some graduate they, or or current student they are going to share their uh, learning experience in our program. So I skip uh, the. the uh, the, the coming few, few slide about our graduate. Yeah, you, you can see up, oh, but I, I can do some very brief introductions. So Carrie Ho, uh, who, 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 who was uh, the first graduate from our program, she's now the associate professor uh, 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 in the University of St. Joseph, Macau. And Rocky is another uh, recently uh, graduate from our program. She is also now uh, teaching uh, in a high education uh, institute in Hong Kong. And we have also have a current student from mainland who is uh, interested in music education. She is now preparing uh, her proposal. Um, I welcome any questions about uh, the requirements or, or anything about the uh, uh, EDD, but let me finish um, uh, my information first. Um, thank you. Thank you, Pansy. Um, Alfredo is already sharing his um, screen. Hi, um, my name is Alfredo Bautista. Um, Thank you so much, everyone, for, for being in, in this information session today with us about the Doctor of Education program in, in ECE. It's, it's really great to see so many people connected in, in the room. Um, so I am associate professor in the department of ECE and also associate head together with, with Dr. Sanjin in, for internationalization in the department, right? So basically what I am going to be talking about and what I'm going to be sharing focuses on three things, right? I'm going to be talking a little bit about the areas of expertise of the EDD program. Sorry, uh, the areas of expertise in the ECE department. Also, I'm going to be sharing a little bit about potential supervisors and potential research topics that our colleagues in the ECE departments would be happy to supervise. And also, following up on what um, Pansy was presenting, I'm also going to be giving you some tips for those of you who would like to apply for the program. I am going to be just offering some recommendations, right? So, um, so as you can see here, so our department, our department, our ECE department is the leading uh, provider of early childhood um, education programs in Hong Kong. We are a very large department. We offer a lot of different programs from diploma, higher diploma, to bachelor's, master's degree, and also doctoral programs. So I saw some people asking, what is the difference between PhD and EDD? Well, both are doctoral programs. With both programs give you access to becoming an assistant professor, as you saw in some of the examples, lectures in universities. Programs are slightly different. We will talk about this a little bit today. But both are doctoral programs, right? So we will clarify some of the questions that I saw. So our department offers all these kinds of programs, also a lot of professional development, as you can see in this beautiful picture that I'm showing over here. So we are a very large department. We, ha we are approximately 60 full-time academic staff, including colleagues in the professorial, uh, professorial track and also in the lecturer track. So we are a pretty large department. I would say probably we are, we are definitely one of the largest ACE departments in Asia. And I would say probably in the world also. Um, so it's, it's like we really have a lot of colleagues who are interested in many topics related to early childhood education. The strategic plan and the aim of the research in the department is becoming the leading uh, research center in ECE, at least in the Asia Pacific region, 
right? So this is kind of our, in our mission. What the picture that I'm showing you is a picture of part of this uh, ECE family. So our research, um, the research that we do in the department has extensive implications for, for teaching practice, for school policies, and also for educational reforms both locally in Hong Kong and regionally and also internationally, right? As you can see on this screen, um, so the research interests of our faculty, of the professors and lecturers working here with us, fall broadly into, into nine research areas, the areas that you can see here. Child development, creativity, including the different art forms, music, arts education, drama education, and also physical education, curriculum and pedagogy, family and community, health um, and health promotion and well-being, also language and literacy, leadership, policy and professional development, special needs education and teacher education. So um, I would definitely recommend you guys to visit this link uh, to get familiar with the kind of uh, research expertise in our department, because that means that we have um, colleagues who are interested in those areas, and we would like to supervise uh, doctoral students, EDD students, as examples of the kinds of uh, research that we engage in. Uh, so I would like to share with you these uh, five recent uh, impact clusters that we have in, in our department. These are five interdisciplinary research impact class, uh, clusters in which m colleagues in the department are collaborating, as you can see in the screen. So we have one looking into family studies, another one on arts and creativity, pedagogies for infants and toddlers, physical well-being, and also play. So this is just some examples of the research that um, my colleagues in the departments do. This is um, this is not about ED, the EDD program, but this, this is about our research expertise, right? And I will explain why, why this is important, right? So on this slide, uh, what I am showing you guys is some of, some of our potential EDD supervisors. As I just mentioned, our department is very large. There are more su potential supervisors, but the pictures and the names that you can see on this screen are colleagues who uh, at the moment are particularly keen on accepting new EDD students, right? Uh, for different reasons, because probably now they have less uh, doctoral students and they are more open to supervise or because they are new colleagues, etc. So these are not the only um, colleagues available to supervise, but they are particularly interested. As Pansy mentioned earlier, so um, you can choose to do your EDD either in English or in Chinese. We will talk about the differences later. On the screen, you see people who are like me, who I am only able to supervise in English, but there are many other colleagues who can supervise in both, uh, either in English or in Chinese. So. So um, here I'm sharing with you some topics. Recently, we, I was asking you together with my colleagues in, around the faculty, um, are you willing to supervise either these students? And if so, in what kind of research areas? So what I am showing here are sort of the keywords that appear. So as you can see here, family, teachers, professional development, young children, self-regulation, music, uh, early years curriculum, school violence. So these are topics of research areas in which um, um, faculty in our department are interested, right? So this is the most, what I'm gonna do now is um, the most important part of my sharing, right? So I suppose that all of you are interested in the program, otherwise you wouldn't be here. So for all of you who would who really are considering to maybe apply for an EDD and do your doctoral degree with us, this is what I would recommend. Number one, go to this website, um, which is in which you are going to find all our colleagues or our faculty colleagues in the department. So what I would recommend is that you just click on the different pictures and then you will see the profile of each person and you will be able to learn about the research interests of the person, about the projects, about the publication, about the research area, etc. 
So something important to mention is that only those colleagues in which you see doctor, those are eligible supervisors. For, as I said, this is a doctoral program, so the only colleagues, the only faculty colleagues who can supervise are colleagues who have already a doctoral degree. So, um, so if you see a doctor, you can go to the profile and learn about the research of our colleagues. And if you are interested in the same area, what I would recommend is simply that you send an email to the person, introduce yourself, say who you are, what you would like to do, the kind of research topic that you are interested in, ask if this person is interested to supervise the students. And this, I would say, this is probably the best way to get accepted in the program, that you get in touch with someone interested in the same area as you first, right? So this is what I would recommend. If you really are interested, but you really cannot find a potential supervisor for your studies, alternative, you can always contact me, <laughs> right? So I would do my best together with my colleagues and Jane and Pansy, and all the colleagues that you are going to meet today, uh, if you cannot find a suitable supervisor for the topic that you're interested in, just simply send us an email and we will direct you to the, to the, the person or the people who are most uh, closely related to that area, right? So this is all I would like to share for you. Thank you so much. Um, this is my email if anybody would like to ask me any questions. Also important, if you would like to follow uh, about the news about our research, please follow us on our on our uh, social networks, LinkedIn or WeChat, and you will be updated about our work here. All right, so later we can have the questions. Sanjin, leave it up to you. Thank you. Then we will have Dr. Zhou Yanling to introduce her supervisory styles as a, a potential supervisor. Um, but that's okay. I, uh, I'm Dr. Yanling Zhou. Um, so I, my potential research area is uh, not, not my potential research area. Your potential uh, topics, if you were, uh, want to do a PhD with me. Um, my speciality is in early language and literacy acquisition and reading acquisition um, bilingually uh, in the multilingual setup. And I do look at into the cognitive processes as well as that sometimes the social setups. Um, so I also look, I looked at uh, both Chinese uh, as a first and second language, as well as the English as a first and second language. You, you could get more information from me or from the website. So typically, um, I would, uh, in general, um, the way I work, um, the way I work, I expect um, a PhD is a very um, solitude journey that takes, um, in general, this is prepare someone to become an independent researcher, a very independent and also strong uh, in the field uh, as well. You need to, and this is a journey, this a PhD is a journey, it's, it takes, it's a immense, in, very immersed study. And in many ways, I would, my style is that uh, I would very much expect it to be um, the person who takes the initiative, um, takes the initiative, take the lead. I see my role as a coach. I see my role as a mentor. I see my role as a guider. Um, so we typically, I expected, um, we have regular meetings, sometimes weekly, sometimes bi-weekly. Um, we discuss on the research topic that you um, you were proposing and extend extend our uh, talk. But also, you will be set up into certain exercise. You'll be kind of like you will. Uh, we will try to train you, and you'll be uh, get into the discipline by practicing writing and participating in different research projects, um, really um, in all different ways to train your research skills and to really um, harn, harn, um, really kind of arm yourself with different research experience. Um, so eventually that will um, uh, kind of uh, help you to develop your own research and develop um, to 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 do your research independently and do a very uh, do a research that is rigid 
that is um, a cutting edge and also contributing greatly to the field as well. I think in general, my motto is uh, not hurry, but not stop. I, uh, that's, I think that's pretty much all that I, 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 I see the kind of, oh, uh, last but not least, I think I'm also quite uh, up for this kind of overall whole person development because PhD is not just about um, academic um, performance in the end you become an independent research but also overall become a, a personal growth uh, journey as well so yes that's all from me thanks uh, thank you thank you Yanling and uh, next we will have our um graduates, EDD graduates, Dr. Sun, Chun, Sun Chun Rong's sharing. Chun Rong, are you here? Uh, yeah, yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. It seems yes. a little bit dark, right? Or maybe I stopped the video here, yeah, a little bit dark. Okay. Um, hello, my name is Sun Chun Rong. I'm currently working as an assistant professor in the U. Uh, University of St. Joseph in Macau now. And Pansy just mentioned about Carrie. Yeah, we are colleagues now. I graduated from our EDD program in 2017. And uh, I'm going to share with you about my learning experience in the ECE department and how this experience contributes to my current job as a university teacher. I came from mainland China, Yunnan province in southwest of China. And before joining the EDD program, I had been worked as a college lecturer for nearly five years in my hometown. And in order to expand my experience and horizon, and of course, to get a doctor degree, I applied for our EDD program. And when I applied for the EDD program, I even don't know the difference between EDD and a PhD. I just thought I'm majoring in education and I have teaching experience and the Department of Early Childhood Education uh, in the Education University of Hong Kong. It seems like the biggest easy department. So I applied and I became into a member in the EDD program, Science 2012. And EDUHK is really a great place for study and for doing research. And I met so many great teachers there. Um, they are, they are always very supportive and always encouraged me and always tolerate me. I really want to share with you a small story. And when I first joined the, uh, the program, I attended a course which related to quantitative research method, but I, I cannot remember the name exactly, but the content is much higher, much deeper than the basic quantitative research method. So I feel so hard and I, want, I wanted to give up. The professor kept on encouraging me, but after two sections, I decided to give up. So, and I told her, I even told her, and I don't think, and I will use such kind of method and in the future. So I feel, okay, I want to give up. But two years later, and when I did my thesis, I find I really need to learn the method. So I went back to the professor. The professor is very supportive. She even introduced one of her PhD students and to support me during the whole process of doing my data analysis. So I feel so appreciated. And her attitude to students actually um, 
in, influence me a lot and make deep impression on me even in the future when I worked as a, as a, as a teacher. So I think such kind of attitude to students and will influence me now and in the future. So I feel it's a great place here. So that's all my sharing. Thanks for listening. Thank you. Thank you, Chen Rong, for your sharing. I also feel very touched um, for this great teacher. Um, then we are going to have our uh, current students, EDD students, Miss Carmen Hall sharing. Carmen, do you want to uh, go ahead and share your screen? All right. Thank you very much. Thank you for inviting me to uh, share my journey, my EDD journey at EDUHK. Uh, so, uh, firstly, I would like to introduce myself. Uh, I am currently a lecturer and a doctoral student, uh, two roles at the Education University of Hong Kong. And my previous academic uh, training before I uh, make my decision uh, joining this at the, uh, the uh, uh, EDD program uh, was that I completed my uh, Bachelor of Early Childhood Education and Master of Education at Melbourne Uni in Australia. So a uh, big decision made five years ago was actually a very life-changing one uh, in terms of impacting my life and uh, my career path. So back then I was a senior program manager at another local um, tertiary institution and choosing to go back to uni to play the role as a student is not an easy choice. And uh, judging the, um, the uh, circumstance uh, back then, I uh, made up my mind because of the two big reasons. So the first reasons is that uh, because of uh, some years of uh, teaching uh, through uh, kindergarten children to adult learners in uh, tertiary sectors, I really want to uh, make some uh, transformation in my uh, teaching preparation. So I would like to make my teaching life a research informed one. So I would like to upgrade my professionalism and uh, the quality of teaching uh, would also be uh, influenced by um, research work. So uh, this is one big reason I want to uh, start doing my uh, doctorate degree. And uh, also I, uh, why I choose uh, Education University of Hong Kong was that uh, I noticed that uh, the easy department, as mentioned by Alfredo and uh, Dr. Sanjin before, uh, actually the easy department uh, in at Chu HK uh, is the biggest one in Hong Kong. So uh, lots of uh, easy expertise, uh, senior pioneer uh, in this sector. Uh, they are all experienced in uh, uh, like shaping me another uh, like um, another level of educator, and also um, the Faculty of Education at the Education University of Hong Kong ranked top ten in the world. So it made me uh, uh, feel feel that um, the, the resources, uh, not just the human resources, but also the the whole package of learning resources in this uh, learning environment was very very. Uh, brilliant and I enjoy studying here. So um, this is my journey. So about four years ago and um, starting from year one, you can see that I, I spent I did spend some time to select the icon. I chose this uh, like different checkpoints of the global world. Is that that was my uh, first impression uh, joining as a first year student. Um, because I know uh, having like work-life balance is not easy, but then uh, it was really an eye-opening and brain-inspiring experience learning together with students from different parts of the world. Similar to tonight, we, we have platform with so many students coming from over 10 countries, so 10 spot uh, different checkpoints in the world. And we come across at the same life points and then we can share experience and uh, academic knowledge in like different settings, different uh, lesson, different courses. So that was brilliant. And um, stepping to year two, actually as uh, spending, I spent year one and year two to uh, complete all the uh, core courses, including the research methods that uh, um, Chung Rung just mentioned as well. And that's a, a basic foundation for this program. So uh, I, I completed all these uh, research methods courses and also I selected some electives from uh, the educational management. So I, I can also open my eyes in uh, some interesting, uh, interested uh, areas as well. And uh, stepping to year three, I focus on completing my ECE specialization course with my supervisor. 
So I, I really enjoy my learning with Dr. Sanjeev. She's smiling so because she really gave me a good learning experience in this easy specialized uh, course. And uh, of course, moving upwards, uh, <laughs> a year four onwards is actually the the most tough uh, journey in uh, throughout the at, at uh, I mean the dot at life because this is really the final moments. So you need to sit down by yourself uh, with all the previous learning, uh, incorporating all the research skills literature review and maybe some uh, contemporary uh, insights in the field and then you, you need to really sit down and prepare for your proposal and thesis writing. So uh, work-life balance is indeed not easy but then being an educator I, I believe sitting here many of you are educator and you're interested in doing something to serve in the education sector and uh, to be a, a student and a, and a, and a teacher or um, you have a full-time job and a at the same time, it's very time consuming, but uh, we all want to uh, make both roles perfect. So uh, actually I am now looking forward to this. And then I, I think some, this is some, uh, I end up uh, products, the final products, final goal, final gift for um, rewarding our life in such a like um, uh, rewarding journey in our study. So uh, joining the EDU um, family is actually giving you another uh, experience uh, to um, develop yourself in this learning community. And uh, previously, of course, we can have a, a face to face uh, sitting in lecture theater and uh, listening to uh, different professors sharing in your selected course. Uh, now, and you can also be supported by our Zoom, uh, which, which is a, a very good uh, tools to facilitate our interaction, our um, communication or consultation with your supervisors. I think it's a good tool because you can sit in any part of the world and do this and this is so flexible. And currently this is my uh, topic that uh, I would uh, further uh, uh, put put ahead my, my efforts in uh, my thesis. It's about developing uh, people capital under the free quality kindergarten education. Hope that I can get more ideas about their job satisfaction level from kindergarten teachers in Hong Kong. So that's my sharing for tonight. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you, Cameron. I also look forward to take the graduation photo with you. Yes, I look forward to that too. <laughs> thank you. Okay, thank you. So uh, for today's sharing or uh, uh, we also have Dr. Darren Chen, who is Associate Professor and Associate Head for Research and Development for the de Department to share his supervisory styles, and uh, Mr. Thomas Fan to talk about his study experiences here in the past semester, uh, because Dr. Chen has teaching duties now, and also Mr. Fan has to attend class, uh, but both of them have prepared videotaping for, uh, prepared video clips for us. So I will now uh, share the, play the videos for you. Hello, this is Dr. Doreen Chen from the Education University of Hong Kong. My research focuses on the psychology of health behavior. Today, I would like to briefly talk about the way I supervise my research students. I provide supervision and examination of a number of postgraduate research students, including master's students, EDD students, and PhD students. I would like to share with you how my supervision style is like. I have to point out that supervision style really varies greatly between supervisors. To me, I treat my students as active members in my laboratories. I hope my students can treasure every moment in their study program and they can strengthen their CV for their future development. For example, if they would like to be a professor or lecturer in the future, it is important that they equip themselves with good research mindset, project coordination experience, presentation or teaching skills. I believe the central goal of my supervision is not only to help the students to meet the graduation requirement of the study program, but I also focus on whether their CVs can be developed so that they can have better track record of research and skills for their future careers. I don't see myself as the boss who control and give advice to every aspect of research and learning activities of my students. I trust my students very much. I often offer high level autonomy so students can have the freedom to develop the line of research they would like to conduct and how they would like to achieve the goal of completing the study programs. I don't set regular meetings, but rather I ask the students to, to keep me updates about the progress and seek help if they need. Sometimes we meet a few times a week or sometimes we meet just every other month. So it really depends. 
However, I think the most important thing is that when students need me, they email me, I always get back to them as soon as I can. Most of the time I feel that students and I are working on this research project together as a team. We work uh, together for achieving the goal of data collection, data analysis, and writing of research papers. I think this autonomy supportive supervision style is often quite effective because students are more likely to be self-motivated to work hard and they are more likely to become independent researchers who can have their own area of expertise in the future. They can also obtain my support when they need to and they feel that they are in the control of their research program. I like to really understand the talents, background and interests of my students and I would like to stimulate their creative mindset about research ideas that are most likely to have significant theoretical and practical values. I also offer lots of opportunity for my students to involve in my own research, teaching and taking part in the peer review process of research papers and we together producing research papers in addition to those only related to their study programs. So far, I can see very good results coming out from my supervision experience. I hope my brief introduction will give you some useful information about how my supervision style is like before you consider doing a research degree under mine or other supervision. Thank you very much. Okay, this is a sharing from Dr. Chen. Um, I, I will play the video prepared for Mr. Thomas Fan now. Hi everyone, thank you for watching this video. I'm Thomas, a year one EDD student majoring in early childhood education. I'm so sorry that uh, I can't join the meeting uh, real time tonight because uh, I'm attending a lesson. That's why I took this video in order to share with you my experience in the past semester. Um, it may probably provide you a new insight for your consideration. Uh, I've been teaching physical education related program and courses in tertiary institution for 10 years. Uh, I found that if I want to promote the habits of uh, healthy lifestyle and uh, regular exercises, um, the best way uh, must be starting the education as early as possible. So that's why uh, I would love to take the EDD uh, in the Department of Early Childhood Education. With the support of uh, uh, Albedo and Derwin, my supervisor in chief and uh, co-supervisor, I started to investigate the teaching practice of physical activities in kindergartens of Hong Kong and looking for the way to improve the teacher uh, professional development in physical activities. Uh, around one year before, uh, I was just the same as you right now. I was worrying about my abilities, my time, my uh, workload, etc. in applying and studying in the EDD. By the way, uh, other than the scheduled lesson, uh, my supervisor provides me uh, great support and uh, flexibility to my writing. For example, uh, currently I'm having uh, the semester break in my work. Uh, so my, su my supervisor provides it me extra instruction uh, in order to foster my work in this gap time. I'm so happy with this because I fully understand that um, they are not just trying to complete their work, uh, but they're considering your needs. Uh, I have no regrets in selecting this program uh, with the all round support from the department. I strongly believe that, that I can complete uh, all the required papers and courses within the regular study years, no matter how frustrated uh, I am in my daily work. So um, looking forward to see you uh, around in the campus very soon. Take care. Bye bye. OK. Thank you. And um, now we finish all the uh, sharing and the presentation presentations prepared for today's session. We have a little bit overwhelmed, but good thing is that um, I can see you raise a lot of questions and our colleagues here um, have already working very hard to answer your question at the same time. Um, with the time uh, left, I, I'm wondering, maybe I can, we can emphasize some of the key questions raised by the audience or um, 
I, I can tell that um, some of the students or applicants are really concerned about the differences uh, between PhD and EDD and also the Chinese stream and English stream of EDD. So uh, can we, yeah, can we use the time to uh, elaborate a little bit about this, especially the Chinese stream of EDD program, Dr. Tan? Yeah. I, I also saw the questions uh, in the chat room. And the major differences is the language, we call it MOI, the medium of instructions. Um, yeah, you use, uh, you use Chinese to study, it means that you use Chinese to write up your assignment and also your thesis. Um, but it doesn't mean that you, you just focus on uh, Chinese reading, but we also emphasize uh, because we, we want you to have uh, international perspective. So you have to keep updates of the current, the latest research finding in your area that you are going to study. Um, that, that is the, just the major differences. Yeah. Uh, I can give you some example. Uh, we have the first uh, uh, Chinese EDD student uh, who is uh, studying, um, who is interested in uh, 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 the teaching method, the pedagogy for supporting uh, non-Chinese speaking children to learn Chinese. So you can imagine if, uh, if the student use English to, 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 to do uh, her thesis, that is rather difficult because uh, we, uh, the study will uh, involve lots of technical terms uh, about Chinese, say, for example, character and, and pronunciations, then Chinese medium will be a better choice. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Tian. And another question from the uh, a lot of Chinese uh, applicants from mainland China is that if they are from mainland China, can they apply for part-time program? Mm, I can also answer this question. So, um, uh, actually, uh, now uh, the structure of the program has been changed a bit to, to support uh, um, students. They may not be able to stay um, to, to, to stay long in Hong Kong. Say, for example, um, uh, they will um, offer summer courses. Uh, then it means that you can spend just a uh, for example, a several month in Hong Kong, and then you can go back to your hometown. Uh, it means that they, they will um, structure, arrange all the courses, particularly for the core courses offered by graduate school. Uh, those are related to research methodology. And after that, you, after you've, you have finished those, co those courses, then you can return to your hometown to finish your data collections. Um, thanks for the technology. And um, you can keep contact or, or um, keep active uh, communication with your supervisor um, uh, by a wide range of uh, um, uh, platform or, or ways of communication. Uh, my student now, um, one of my students, uh, ED student, who is now uh, keep staying in mainland China, but we uh, keep uh, doing Zoom tutorial uh, each week. Um, my answer is that <laughs> to to put it in a in, in a in a more direct way, um, you need to uh, stay. Say for example, for a few months in Hong Kong, uh, to finish the core courses, but you don't need to sp spend a whole year or to spend uh, all the time in Hong Kong. Um, yeah, hope I can answer your your questions. Oh, thank you. I just saw that Alfredo raised your hand. Do you want something? Uh, do you have something to add? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Sanjit. I would like to clarify because I have seen a ma many questions asking the same thing and I would like to just clarify two things. Many of the um, attendees today are asking about the differences between PhD yeah. and EDP. I would like to just simply say both are doctoral programs um, that give you access to the same kinds of positions later on. The difference basically really is the, the, the weight of the courses and the research. In EDD, you take more courses. You also do research, but you take more courses. And supposedly, the the load in terms of research is slightly slow, uh, lower. However, in a PhD, you take less courses, and supposedly you do a larger research project. That's one difference, sort of the. And another difference is the type of program. 
EHD is uh, you need a scholarship and it's incredibly competitive to get those scholarships in Hong Kong. Whereas the EDD is a self-funded program, meaning students pay from their pocket, right? And so far, we do not have scholarships for EDD students. Maybe in the future, maybe we may get some, but we would let you know, but so far we don't have. So that's one of the things I wanted to emphasize. And the second thing I wanted to say, because I know that many questions, uh, we have many questions about it, about the entry requirements. Um, the entry requirements that Pansy mentioned earlier are the entry requirements by given as suggested by graduate school. However, they are, are, are flexible, right? So they are, we consider many other aspects, right? So ultimately the ones recommending and making decisions is us. So someone was asking, do I need to have a degree in early childhood education? The answer is no. For example, Thomas, who is my student, Thomas does not have a degree in early childhood education. His degree is in a different discipline. And other colleagues were saying, do I need to have those four years of exp practical experience? The answer is also no. The thing is like, we assess candidates sort of holistically, right? So some people may not have those requirements, but they are incredibly strong for other reasons. So if you're interested to apply, I would say reach out to us and we would assess, uh, as Pansy mentioned, the, the, the application holistically, right? And also what we really pay a lot of attention to the proposal that is submitted, the quality of the proposal that you submit. So if you see that you don't meet exactly the entry requirements, don't be scared. You, just to say, I have now two students <laughs> and two, car two students currently, and none of them really met those requirements, but they are really good for other reasons. So both were accepted. These are, this is what I would wanted to share. Thank you. Oh, great, great. Thank you, uh, Alfredo. And I think, I hope uh, most of our questions are get are already got answered now. Um, I think we have good timing, right? Um, yeah. If you have further questions, you can just write to contact our uh, graduate school for a uh, general inquiry, or you can also contact Dr. Pansy Tan uh, for um, some for your specific questions. Here are the contacts for um, the graduate school and also for Dr. Tan. Can Can I add a, a few words? Yeah, please, please. Uh, because we have uh, received uh, a lot of applications uh, throughout the years and just a little tips or advice for uh, anyone who are interested to, to apply. First of all, you need to prepare a good proposal. And before, before that, you, as uh, Alfredo advised, that go to our, our department's website to uh, identify which uh, research area that you are interested in. And then maybe you, you, you take a, a initiative to contact the, the, the professor and seek his or her advice. And remember to nominate if the professor agreed to do so, uh, take the boxes of nominations and write down his or her name in the application form. That helps a lot. Yeah, that's all. Thank you, thank you for the um, supplemental information, uh, Pansy. Okay, so taking this opportunity, um, Alfredo and I also want to uh, invite you to join the the IGSS 2021. This is a three-day graduate study seminar. Uh, we co-organized with UAEU and the University of Helsinki next week. Please scan the QR code to get more information about uh, IGSS 2021 and join us next week. Um, at the end of today's sharing, um, Alfredo and I also want to show our gratitude to all the support from our speakers, our um, colleagues, graduates, and students. Uh, we also want to thank all the participants for your interest uh, in EDD ECE program and in our um, interconversation uh, online forum. Um, we also want to thank uh, all the hard work from Mr. Andy Lau and also Ms. Miu Ho Yi. Uh, we four actually comprise the internationalization team in the ECE department. Please leave your comments and the feedback by scanning the QR code here. Uh, we look forward to having your comments to improve our events. 
Okay, Sam, uh, we look forward to seeing you soon on our next interconversation, and we even look more forward to seeing you next year in campus. If you want to know more uh, updated news of our department, please join our networks on LinkedIn and WeChat. Thank you, and bye-bye. Uh, this is end of today's sharing. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye-bye.